And, you know, he did kind of seem like, you know, ha, 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 I know the law, very funny. I can get away with whatever I want. Hey, y'all, fam, it's Rachel. And Rhea. And we're the Gal Sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. You diehard Gal Sister fans might be wondering where MCK is, the boyfriend of the Gal Sisters. He's not here right now. We don't know when he'll be back. Mm -hmm. Ask him. Well, before we get started, please make sure you are following us. So the social media is scrolling below. As well as linked in the description box down below, where you will also find MCK's channel. Please subscribe and tell him the Gala Sisters sent you. We also built our own website where we have three different blogs. Or buy us in an online store at www.thegalasisters.com. And if you'd like to stay involved and informed for free, then click that big old subscribe button. And with that, we'll take a look at the new video of Brian Koberger. No, this is actually a new video. It's not that other video that they have of him. This is brand new, and it was taken in Washington State of him being pulled over by a police officer. And this is very interesting. I mean, it shows him speaking clearly. I mean, we, we just got to roll it for you. Mm -hmm. Hello, Officer. I am Officer Loangus. Stops being audio and video recorded. I think I know, I think you know why I stopped you. You ran the red light. What actually happened was I was stuck in the middle of the intersection. Yeah, so I, was I was behind you the whole left. time. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, you're not supposed to enter the intersection at all for that reason, because if the light turns red, then you're stuck in the intersection, and then you're on the red light. So that's the reason I stopped you. Do you have your license on you? Yep. So can you, would you explain that to me a little bit further? So in Pennsylvania, when you're stuck mm -hmm. like in their intersection, mm -hmm. you have to make the left. So what would, what would the appropriate thing for me to have done not, just just you're not supposed to block an intersection like that in washington so the just by you blocking the intersection that's technically a ticketable violation and then thus then you're running a red light so it's another ticketable offense so you're not supposed to proceed into the intersection until you can go because a lot of people do what you just did right is like you're sitting in the intersection yeah. waiting and then turns and then you're blocking so yeah there was a little <clears> bit of confusion with speeding because someone had stopped. I wasn't sure what they were doing, and then they put on their light to turn. Mm -hmm. So I thought that maybe they were letting me go through. Oh. Did you see that? No. Mm -mm. Yeah, like right before I made the turn, there was someone who like, made a right. They didn't have their, you know, their signal on, so I wasn't sure if they were just waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would just advise yeah. uh, just don't enter the intersection until you can go, so you don't get stuck. Um, let's see. But in that situation, the best thing to do then would be back up. And not... I don't know if there's a best thing to do in that situation, because you're either going to back up into somebody, yeah. or you're going to run a red light. So, or you're going to be sitting in an intersection. Yeah. There's not really a great option there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just slightly into the crosswalk, so... Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, where I'm from Pennsylvania, we mm -hmm. actually don't have, like, crosswalks. Oh, So even if you're, if you're kind of slightly... They have, there's a little bit more leeway as well. Like there are a few lines. Like there's one white line and there's another one. Mm -hmm. Like there's like a like a certain yeah. margin from which you can actually kind of put your vehicle, place your vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So I know laws vary state to state, but there is a law yeah. in Washington for blocking an intersection like that, proceeding through, and yeah. you don't. Um, so that was that video. As you can see there, he doesn't really like police officers. He wants to kind of run things his own way. He's kind of mouthy. And he's driving the white car we were all looking for. Yeah. So it actually is not a law in Pennsylvania that you can enter an intersection when cars are not moving and just sit there obstructing traffic and then run a red light. That's not a lot anywhere. If you I don't did, think. I mean, I don't think so either, but if you did that, that'd be really bad. I mean, you would cause an accident, or you could. Very easily. I'm not, I'm not even the one that drives. She's the only yeah. driver in the whole family, but it makes sense. You can get T-boned. It totally is. So, just going off on that a little bit more, um, we drive for DoorDash, and we actually picked up Uber Eats, too, recently. 
And so we end up driving a lot in downtown Minneapolis, uptown Minneapolis, and surrounding suburbs and stuff like that. But especially in the city, it's definitely way different than driving out in the burbs. Mm -hmm. And there's so much more traffic. There's lots of one ways. You can't turn left sometimes and like you can't turn left on certain roads from like seven to nine or six to eight or whatever. And there's all sorts of weird shit going on. There's lots of pedestrians and there's so many goddamn bikers. Oh my God. So it's, there's a lot going on. There's a shit ton to navigate and then you're trying to follow directions, etc. And I remember going through driving school and they said, absolutely do not pull into an intersection if you can't pull out of the intersection immediately. Not only is it illegal, because you could run a red light like Brian Koberger did. It's, it's disrespectful. You have to pay attention when you're driving, just like when you're walking, just like when you're doing really much of anything. The gal, the daughter, has much about paying attention to things, and she has a book called Where Are Your Eyes? Well, your eyes should be glued to that damn road. Mm. Now, have I accidentally gotten caught in an intersection before because I misjudged that I would be able to turn? I mean, I started driving when I was 17, and I'm now 37, so 20 years of driving. Yeah, I have. I've gotten stuck in that intersection before. Does it happen often? No, I make a conscious decision not to. And here in Minnesota, Minnesota nice, it's way different than driving in like Chicago or in San Francisco or something like that. It's so much different. And maybe even Washington. In Minnesota, we're actually more likely to let you go and create a way for you if you're trying to turn and say, hey, hey, yeah, keep going. Where in other places I've had to drive, they don't do that. So I think there's a little bit more leeway here in Minnesota, but you still should try not to do it. No, I don't think that you should. When you're driving, always just make sure you're safe. And, you know, he did kind of seem like, you know, ha, 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 I know the law, very funny, I can get away with whatever I want. Yeah, he seemed like a cocky little shit that he was going to be able to talk his way out of this and kind of, like, try to argue with the police officer. Oh, well, where I come from, we don't do that. That's not breaking the law. Oh, police. It's a federal law. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, so there's, like, state laws, county laws... City laws, but there's also federal laws, too. Mm -hmm. There are. There are. Be like, well, um, in my home state, we go 100 miles an hour on back roads. They, nowhere do they do that. No. I, I, I assure you. No. No. They don't do that. So, <sighs> we actually saw this video come out on News Nation. That's where we saw it the first time. But, I mean, it's just really interesting to see the profile of someone who is wanted for allegedly murdering four people in cold blood, possibly more from what we've heard. Um, we don't know 100% for sure that he did it, but I can tell you right now that from what I do know about him, he sounds like an asshole. Yeah, me too. And I think that learning about people's behavior is the most important part of learning that kind of stuff. Like when they profile killers or they profile who died on the investigation discovery they always say oh well this person seemed like a very nice person and they seemed like an individual who wouldn't do anything illegal yeah well <laughs> he got so defensive and argumentative and almost like i'll take charge of this situation and you don't do that with the cop i mean we i've had lots of different interactions with police some good some bad and some are just interactions and really if you get pulled over the best course of action is not to argue even if they're being a jerk and you know you're right and they're wrong first of all never admit to doing anything wrong ever no don't ever admit to it they have to tell you what they think you did and just apologize Be like i'm so sorry i didn't mean to they always do that Mm -hmm. and I've gotten out of many tickets by just saying that. I've been there with you. Now, I don't drive, which is why I didn't talk as much. Um, Rachel is the only driver. MCK and Emma and myself do not drive for various reasons. Yeah. And we're not going to tell you guys what those are because, you know what, you can figure it out for yourself. Yeah. So, this was in Washington State, and obviously it wasn't in Idaho, but 
and it wasn't in Pennsylvania either. But but a lot of people who like like a lot of people live in Minneapolis work in uh, Wisconsin. A lot of people who, who live in Washington work in Idaho. Yes, they just do. Yeah. So he was definitely an interesting character. He still is, I'm sure. Um, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. And oh, for those of you who were watching the. Um, Bethany Funke or Funk or whatever her name is, the one of the surviving roommates who was called to testify at the uh, preliminary hearing. She actually doesn't have to do that now. She they came to an agreement where she'll be meeting with Brian Koberger's lawyers and she will be giving her or giving them her statement there. Yep. So we are going to end the video here. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for watching this and listening to what we have to say because, you know, what we have to say matters. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button down below. We have not gotten a subscriber in a while. Let's try to change that. Watch the videos and watch the watch the watch because you know you watch you even if you've already seen it. Give that bell a big you want to be updated whenever we post videos or go live. Unfortunately, lives are canceled until MCK can really help facilitate them because there's just too darn many of you now and it's too complicated and too confusing. Our regular left schedule on this channel is every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll have a second channel entitled Adventures with the Gala Fam which really will heavily feature more vlogs over there. You may be interested to know more about the Gala Daughter. Also, there's a video over here that you liked. Check over there and see if we move. it's been moved. A lot of our videos have been moved, and that's okay. That's just how it's gonna be. If you don't like it, I can't help you. We also have a podcast that is gonna be returning very soon and called Gab with the Gala Sisters, which is a movie, which is a podcast on movies and TV, which will be feature MCK. You don't like it, nothing I can do about it. Don't worry about it. Go do something else. Go somewhere else. Unsubscribe from this channel. Goodbye. I'm tired of saying that. But of course, just like our YouTube channel, the Gala Sisters could never stop at one channel or one podcast, could we? Oh, heavens no. We have a second podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I get you, Mr. and Miss Crazy Wrestling Family, hosted by the one and only boyfriend of the Gala Sisters. MCK, if he was here, he'd give you a clip about warming up the stove and or microwave and eating his feet. He'd also say, DMC gonna give it to you. Yep. And that podcast goes out the Thursday before a professional wrestling pay-per-view. You can find all of, this, all of this information in the description box below. Make sure you're looking through there. If you want, you can buy our merch that we designed ourselves because we do everything here. We literally do all the editing. I mean, we're doing this now, like, in addition to doing all of our courier services, so it's a lot of work, but we love it. And if you want to support our work, you can just buy us a coffee or donate through PayPal if you can. Please don't go broke doing it. We understand that times are not exactly easy. And thank you to those who have donated. And yeah, just remember that we're happy that our boyfriend is here. You know, he helps um, support all of us. I mean, Emma, my daughter, loves having him here. So I, if you don't like it, we're not sharing. We absolutely adore him. And if you don't, I don't care. I really don't give a fuck. I don't want to hear it. No, don't want to hear it. And yeah, thank you so much for subscribing. We'll talk to you again soon. Love and share. Bye! Bye.